Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Tony Coleman, and today I'm going to show you how to install BOINC, which stands for Berkeley Open Infrastructure for Network Computing, inside a Windows 10 virtual machine. First thing you'll want to do is to download the BOINC software. You can do that by going to https colon two forward slashes boink dot berkeley dot edu forward slash download underscore all dot php. This will bring you to a page that shows all the various different versions. I recommend using the latest development version. I've rarely seen it ever be unstable. And if you're on a regular PC, I recommend using the version with VirtualBox as it gives extra capabilities for some of the other projects that actually have their own VMs that they send as work units. However, in this case, I don't want VirtualBox inside VirtualBox, so I'm just downloading the Boink client. It does not take very long to download, but depending on your speed, it may be a minute or two. When done, just hit run. Yes. Let it go through its process. If you download the version with VirtualBox attached to it, it will actually install VirtualBox before it installs Boink. So hit next, accept the agreement, next. Now here, Usually this checkbox is already checked for you. I uncheck it because I do not want the Boink screensaver to run. This option for service install, that basically means that if you have a password on your user account, uh, you, you can still have Boink start up without logging into the PC, or if you have multiple user accounts on the computer, it does not require yours to be logged in in order for it to uh, start up and run. That's very handy in, in many cases, except for if you're wanting to use your GPU. If you want to process work on your GPU, you do not want to install as a service. Allow the users to control point, which is typically fine. Hit next, install. Let it do its thing. Okay, here it wants to launch. Normally, if you do it this way, it'll go right into Boink. If you did a service install, it will actually uh, want to start up after restarting your PC. Normally, you get the simple view, but I've already had Boink installed on this virtual machine in the past, so it remembered that I wanted the advanced view. I'll show you what the simple view looks like here in a moment. However, right now, it's wanting to attach to a project. I'm going to select World Community Grid, which if you don't already have an account with World Community Grid, I recommend doing so. It's one of the better projects in my opinion. Just go to https colon two forward slashes join dot world community grid dot org question mark recruiter ID equals three three eight five four two the and symbol team ID equals BP 5XNJ BR 9N1. That is case sensitive, so please pay attention. However, since I already have an account, I'm going to attach. I will agree to their terms. Hit next. You can also create an account this way, but it does not attach you to any team and doesn't give you the experience of configuring any of the website preferences, which I recommend doing. However, since I have an account, I'll hit yes, existing user, type in the email address. And now I'm attached to the World Community Grid. It takes a moment to download. You should see notices uh, once everything's done projects, you see I'm attached to our community grid. When it downloads all the files it needs, I will start getting work units in here. So while I'm waiting on that, I can go to options and, and computing preferences because I want to be able to tell Boink how to use my computer to my liking. So on the computing tab, you get to choose what percentage of all the CPU cores or threads for Boink to use. The more threads you have, the uh, different the percentage works. For example, if you have a quad core computer, setting 75% will use only three of the four cores. However, if you 
have, say, an eight-thread computer, 75% would only use six of the eight. The next one for use at most 100% of CPU time, basically what this does is when a work unit's running, if you were to set that at 90%, that means it would run nine seconds out of every 10. So that 10th second, it would go to idle. Some people do this to limit the heat that the CPU can generate. It's more used for things like a, uh, a laptop or a mobile device, but some people will use that even on machines built for it. You've got other options here for suspending, like if you're on a battery, uh, that's more for a laptop. Do uh, you want to suspend when the computer's in use? In use basically means if the mouse or keyboard is active, you can tell it to suspend the graphics card uh, when the computer's in use. That way the CPU continues to crunch work, but your video card will not. The advantage of this is if your video card is running while you're trying to use the PC, um, it may end up getting choppy or non-responsive. So by letting that suspend, it will open up those resources and make your uh, processing and your uh, screen time a little more pleasant. Next one, suspend when boink CP, non-boink CPU usage is above. Uh, that's basically good for if you've got other things running in the background like antivirus or if you're listening to music or something. If um, the processor ends up using more than 25%, It'll suspend Boink no matter what the other preferences are. This is really handy if uh, you're actually trying to use the PC for legitimate uses outside of distributed computing at the same time as the crunching. I normally set that to 85%. The other category, what this is, this is just basically additional cache, uh, additional uh, work units you want to download so that in the event your computer isn't on the internet 24-7 or if you know the project is going to go down for maintenance for a while, you might want to cache up additional work. However, running with a large cache sometimes can cause problems too. All depends on your situation, how much work your computer can actually get done, and the needs of the, the project itself. The network tab, that's where you can limit how much speed or how much data Boink uses disk and memory. This is where you can limit how much disk space it uses. Um, I do recommend checkboxing the leave non-GPU tasks in memory while suspended. If you don't, every time that you suspend Boink or Boink suspends itself for some reason, it will offload all of the processing it's done from its memory and then it basically will try to start over again from its last checkpoint if it has checkpointing. Daily schedule, that is used for if there's certain times of the week that, or even certain times of the day that you only want Boink to communicate over the network. This is handy if you have tiered data. Um, a lot of satellite internet connections tend to have certain times of the day where it's free internet, but if you use it during the other times, you go off of the limited amount of data that you've paid for. By utilizing these times, you can set up Boink so that it's not chewing away at the data you want. So when you're done configuring, you just hit save, say yes, and there you are. Now you can see while I was setting all that up, World Community Grid downloaded three work units, the one that the one single core that I've given the virtual machine is running on, and two additional work units per my cache settings. All right, so if you wanted to see the simple view, just click on view, you can switch back to simple view. This is how most of you will see it when you first install. I don't like it this way, it gives you far less control and visual. Let's just switch back to advanced view. And then another thing I change is under options, there's an other options category. I don't want a notification coming up in the bar, so I change it to never. I want the Boink manager to run a log on. And I don't need it to do the exit dialog, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. If I hit the X, it'll go down in the taskbar down here. Just double click back on it, it comes back up. And another thing I tend to use is instead of just adding each project I support manually, I use an account manager. The one I use is called BAM, it stands for Boink Account Manager. It's hosted by boinkstats.com. I've already set up an account, so all I have to do is hit next. It attaches just like the projects do. So I enter my credentials.
Now that I'm attached, hit finish. And what you'll see is I have a few other projects that I attach automatically whenever I attach to my account manager. By doing that, it saves a lot of time and it'll go ahead and run those as well. The last thing I usually do is I go under activity because I want my network connection to always be communicating or available I should say. And that way even if the Boink client suspends the work, I can still download or upload as needed. So that's all you really need to know for the basics on installing, installing Boink on a Windows 10 install. There's a ton of other configurations and options you can do depending on the projects uh, and the work that they have because sometimes they have multiple different types of work and each one can behave differently. So to find out all the ins and outs to that, you'd probably want to go to those projects' websites, go into their forums and ask questions, or you can always uh, join a team and have some of your team members also help you out. I contribute to hard OCP, as you can probably see from the test email account that I was using for setting all this up. Um, we're always looking for new members, so if you're interested, come join us. So thank you for watching my video, and if you enjoyed it or found it to be helpful, please click subscribe and share the video. It costs nothing to do, but helps content providers like myself a great deal. Until next time, have a good day.